Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. Just going to have some good, clean jokes here. Get these from the Good News Weekly. Let's read these things. There were two skunks. Well, a skunk got in somebody's basement. So there was a call-in show on the radio, and they said, uh, the lady calls in and says, I got a skunk in my basement. He said, this is easy. He said, all you do is you take breadcrumbs, lead from your basement out to the woods. The skunk will follow the breadcrumbs out to the woods. Out goes the skunk. She's like, great. So she tries it. And well, then she calls back a few days later and says, help. Now I've got two skunks in the basement. Because instead of one skunk leaving, another skunk came from the woods in there. All right. Um, while working as a radiology technician in a hospital emergency room, I took x-rays of a trauma patient. I brought the films to our radiologist who studied the multiple fractures of the femur and pelvis. What happened to this patient, he asked in astonishment. He fell out of a tree, I reported. The radiologist wanted to know what the patient was doing up in a tree. He said, I'm not sure, but his paperwork states he works for Bob's Expert Tree Service. The doctor looks intently and says, well, cross out expert. All right. One rainy evening, a husband and wife, they had been in a store shopping. They come running out in the rain, and there the car. The keys are locked in. He's like, oh, no. So he goes running. He's looking for a, a clothes hanger. He has to run a quarter of a mile in the rain to get a clothes hanger. He goes and he gets the keys out of the car, and then he puts the clothes hanger under the seat. His wife says, now, we just did all this. Why are you putting that clothes hanger under the seat? He said, that's easy. He said, if this ever happens again, we'll have a clothes hanger handy. Not too bright. Amen. Brighter bulbs in the ceiling fan there. All right. The average person's idea of a good sermon is one that goes over their head and hits one of their family members or neighbors. Yeah. All right. This is to the dog. I'm so sorry about you being sent to the dog pound for the broken lamp, which you did not break, the fish you did not spill, the carpet that you did not wet, the wall that you did not dirty with red paint. Things here at the house are calmer now, and just to show you that I have no hard feelings toward you, I'm sending you a picture so that you'll always remember me. Best regards, the cat. Got rid of that dog, didn't it? All right. So... We went to order breakfast one day. Two eggs, bacon, hash browns, and toast. Special, $1.99. Sounds good, my wife said, but I don't want the eggs. Then I'll have to charge you $2.49 because you're ordering a la carte, the waitress warned her. And I've had this happen to me before. You may have too. You mean I'd have to pay for not taking the eggs, my wife asked incredulously. I'll take the special. Well, how do you want your eggs? Raw and in the shell. She took them home with her. Smart lady. Smart doc, I'm prescribing these pills for you, said the doctor to the overweight patient who wanted to lose weight without exercising. Now the doctor said, I don't want you to swallow the pills. Just spill them on the floor twice a day and pick them up one by one. You'll lose weight. All right, this is a saying by Oswald Chambers. This is not a joke, a little more serious. It says, leave the broken, irreversible past in his hands and step out into the invincible future with him. And then God, this is not Oswald Chambers, this is just a saying, God always gives his very best to those who leave the choice to him. And then this is really good too. Did you read about the little boy who returned home after his first Sunday school class? His mother asked, who was your teacher? The little boy answered, I don't remember her name. But she must have been Jesus' grandmother because she didn't talk about anyone else. Does our conversation reflect our love of Jesus? Would our words give away our relationship with him? Death and life are in the, in the power of the tongue. We must remember to praise him while we're waiting and remember three things. The pattern has a purpose. The pattern has a plan. The pattern has a process. Stop struggling and start listening, praying, and trusting. He'll keep you right where you are until you can clear him, clearly hear him say, I love you. And then Albert Camus said this, Don't walk in front of me, I may not follow. 
Don't walk behind me, I may not lead. Walk beside me, just be my friend. I wonder how many more people we could live for God if we just do that. God bless. I hope this brightens your day. In Jesus.